Hi, this is Fred. I'm uh, filming this video today to show you the aircraft data cards that I made for the game Redstorm from GMT. The game Redstorm just came out this year. It's part of uh, the same family of games as Elusive Victory and Downtown, and to a lesser extent, Bloody April. Uh, the difference between Elusive Victory Downtown and Red Storm is that Red Storm has many more aircraft um, in its arsenal and uh, the counter density on the map is higher and it's sometimes difficult to actually get the right data by only referring to the actual aircraft data charts that are provided in the game. So I decided to make data cards for the game that are similar to those found in Bloody April so that you can uh, quickly access the aircraft data without having to refer to the uh, default chart that was provided. Uh, I used the Game Crafter to uh, print as a printing service to print those cards. And I must say I'm very impressed by the quality that uh, the Game Crafter provides for the price. Um, the uh, package that I put together contains 72 aircraft data cards. Those cards are in a poker format. Uh, the back of the card has the actual uh, cover from the game. And in addition to the 72 cards, you will get also 15 cards for surface to air missiles, batteries. Those are, they, they need less data uh, than uh, the aircraft data cards, so I uh, just uh, used a smaller format. That's the actual mini, mini cards from uh, board games and Euro games. So the printing quality is high, which is really nice, and the actual material that the cards are made of is not as light as you might expect. Actually, uh, if you compare it to a card from GMT, which is from uh, Illusions of Glory, the uh, thickness of the Gamecrafter card is slightly less, but it's barely noticeable. So it's, it's, really, uh, it's really good quality. I'm really impressed by that. Now, the whole package... Uh, 72 aircraft cards and 15 uh, surface-to-air missile cards uh, comes for 10.99 on the Grim Crafter, and that's the minimum price that that website let me uh, list that package for. Uh, now the deck contains the aircraft cards for all the nationalities present in the game, but does not contain the uh, cruise missiles. Uh, it, the data on those missiles is, is minimal, so I didn't think it was necessary to include the cards. Also, helicopters are not included because they are just uh, using the same type of performance values, uh, regardless of the type. The different nationalities are color-coded and correspond to pretty much to the colors that you can find on the counters. You got uh, Americans are blue, light blue and dark blue. You have the uh, West Germans that are light and dark grey. The Brits are brownish. The Belgians are green. The Dutch are orange. Canadians are kind of khaki. The East Germans are dark green. And finally, the Russians, actually the uh, Soviets, are yellow and orange, dark yellow. The same color coding uh, goes for on the actual surface-to-air missile cards. Okay, let's take a look at how to read the cards, the aircraft cards first. Let's take a look at an American aircraft, the F-4 Phantom II-E version. Here is the name of the plane. This is equivalent to this line on the uh, original game table. Uh, profile picture of the plane, a nationality, a roundel. Number of crew members is here, it corresponds to that number here. When the number is above uh, 5, uh, you're going to have a, a number written on the actual pilot silhouette. 13 for the compass call here, for example. Uh, under that, you have the uh, runway, minimum runway needed for that aircraft to uh, uh, perform takeoffs and landings, which is equivalent to this number here. The fuel number, which is this one. Uh, 
let's skip those for now uh, let's go to the big box in the middle which is the uh, speed and maneuver ratings uh, equivalent to that set of data here so let's zoom in a little bit on that one so you got the altitude bands a very high altitude is only going to be used for the uh, mig 25 uh, the other bands are written here uh, deck and low medium and high and then you have the uh, speed the uh, dash speed and the maneuver rating that's for a clean aircraft if the aircraft is laden speed dash speed maneuver rating and that's equivalent to those numbers uh, those numbers here here so it's presented in different different format but you get used to it and on the right side you have the radar of the aircraft it is, uh, if it has one some aircraft do not have a radar and they do not show the uh, display there the radar display uh, in the case of the f4e you have a limited look down radar lt limited 14x range 12x uh, or more as a as a minus one a DRM for uh, uh, radar lock. So that's equivalent to this block of data here on the table. Under that, the rest of the electronics, uh, RWR, it's an A value for the Phantom, and then Jammer 3D. The next block of data is going to be the air-to-air -air weapons. Uh, infrared missiles, radar homing missiles, guns. Name of the uh, weapon is right there. Uh, same for the uh, radar homing missile, and that's the caliber of the gun which influences some of the um, air to ground rolls uh, for higher caliber uh, guns. The top line here for the weapons are the same format for everything. The first number is the uh, air to air value of that weapon which is obtained from the uh, from the air-to-air -air table here so it's a standard rating the uh, second number is a depletion number for that particular aircraft so for the Phantom here uh, AIM-9L has a depletion number of 3 which is indicated here uh, same for the radar homing missiles and the gun uh, second line is a BVR engagement values the first number is the uh, rating for the BVR engagement. And then the next three numbers are the uh, engagement ranges, uh, depending on the aspect of the target. So front range, uh, beam range, and uh, rear range engagement. Numbers that you find here. AIM9F9. Uh, five and two any type of notes that you might find on the right side of the line for the aircraft here is going to be written in italics on the on the card for example here uh, the um, depletion number for the air to air weaponry is going to be changed to six if the aircraft is tasked with bombing ICAD mission all right the next block will be the air to ground block showing the ordnance that the aircraft can carry and other uh, air-to-ground data. On the left side, the bomb site, plus one for that aircraft. And that aircraft can do radar bombing, it's indicated here. Bomb load is next, uh, three points. Uh, there's a two point here in case of deep strike, That's rem the reminder is here, so that's the, the, expo the exponent is the deep strike one. And then on the right side, you have two columns that usually uh, indicate the type of uh, bombs that the aircraft carries. And then on the right side, all type of uh, uh, guided ordnance that it can carry. Note that any type of options that's allowed for by the rules is indicated on the card. For example, this one, APATCBU, is allowed by the rules for a US aircraft or US aircraft. So that's indicated here. And here, the uh, infrared electro-optical electro glide bomb. Uh, that's allowed by a note on the uh, data line there. So that's indicated on the card too. So you don't have to refer to the rules to know what kind of ordnance the aircraft can carry. It's all written. Finally, the blue band here at the bottom gives you uh, 
all other types of nodes. For example, that aircraft is night capable and multi-role capable. And it's got a special system for visual detection. And the rule for that system is just indicated here. And that's it. So that's for a regular aircraft. Now we have uh, sometimes special types of aircraft like this one. This is an aircraft that's usually tasked with jamming. The data block is similar. Uh, the only differences not notable here are the unlimited fuel for that blinder jammer version and the actual jamming, standoff jamming value. Now those values are found here on that chart, uh, but they were reproduced on the card here. So we have three points of jamming up to 10 X, two points of jamming up to 20 axes, one point of jamming up to 40 axes. And then that's the actual restriction on that particular aircraft and the spot jamming for that aircraft. And also that one has rear guns with the depletion number here. Um, and that's it, that's it for the aircraft. Now let's take a look at the SAM cards. For example, let's take a look at the SA-11. The data on that card comes from that table here in the game, the uh, SAM data table, obviously. So the SA-11, the name of the uh, battery here, this is the number of shots, according to that value here. Lock on after launch, electro optical tracking, you find those at the bottom here if they are able to do it. This is the uh, target classification profile for that. It's a Charlie profile. And here you have the acquisition range, which is 14 axes. Move this. Okay, the center portion of the card is the most important part. That's the actual envelope, firing envelope of that battery. So it's presented on the left with the altitude bands, deck, low, medium, high, very high, and at the bottom, the range. The first column is the minimum range, which is found here on the table. The last column is the maximum range, which is found well here and here on the table. The columns in between, there can be one, two or three, are the uh, different modifiers for uh, long range. So for example, that uh, SA-11 has a long range of eight to 10, which means that at eight, it's gonna get a minus one, at nine, a minus two, at 10, a minus three. Now that is combined with the actual altitude modifiers that are found here. So at uh, uh, deck, it's got a zero modifier, low plus one, medium plus one, high minus one. So if you look at the first column, which is the uh, minimum range column, you see those here, zero plus one plus one minus one. So that would be the actual f um, attack modifier for that battery from one hexagon to seven. After that, at eight, you, you start getting uh, minus ones added to that. So at eight, you get an extra minus one, which which uh, turns the zero into a minus one and so forth. At nine, you get another minus one, and at 10, another minus one. The color coding here is just to indicate the uh, relative difficulty of the hit. So the darker the purple, uh, the more difficult it is to actually hit an aircraft. Um, high aircraft at range 10, you would have a minus four modifier, so it's pretty hard to actually get a SAM hit uh, in that particular uh, range and altitude. And then at the bottom, you have the additional nodes. So for example, this one can perform anti-radar uh, SAM attacks and it is mobile. Uh, in the middle, you got a profile and the uh, roundel again. Now, one last thing, on some of those SAM cards, you will find additional symbols. Like for example, this one means that uh, the SAM uh, can acquire and attack helicopters at deck altitude. That's why it's placed here on the deck line. And this one means that uh, it is an infrared SAM. It doesn't need to acquire the target. It can just strike the target using infrared sensors. And that's about it.